Hi Paul Gerard from Price Accounting Services back again in our rental property playlist to talk about land tax. Now land tax is a state tax and I'm still surprised considering land tax has been around for 40 to 50 years that we encounter investors who say well, what's land tax don't don't you do that for us you're a tax agent and the answer is no we don't um, land tax is a state tax on property wealth okay and increasingly the states are viewing property taxes on land as a very solid source of revenue for example in new south wales recently nine billion extra dollars in land taxes being raised which supports the state budget that's a lot of money and with the enhanced value of property i can't really see it reducing other than if property sales stop which is then stamp duty so huge state taxes on property wealth um, and we're going to discuss a number of these issues and how they relate to tax deductions, etc., in this video. So, land tax being a state tax, it's applied to um, the value of property that the owners own during the relevant tax period. Generally speaking, land tax is based on your land ownership at the taxing date. So, unlike, say, income tax, which applies for the year, land tax applies as at for example in new south wales its taxing date is midnight at 31st of december of each year so if you buy a property on the 31st of december and it's all settled on the, at midday um, that property's taxed as if you've owned it the full year because it's taxed as at midnight okay um, other states use the 30th of june for example in queensland 30th of june uh, taxing date so get familiar with the property that you're pro proposing to buy or that you already own in terms of how is it taxed who is taxed what is my threshold now thresholds um, each state has a land tax threshold and it applies to the owners now the owners in some cases is an individual and in other cases it's the parties that own the land and in many cases that can then be grouped so if if um, Mary and Dave own one property in New South Wales then that's one threshold if Mary and Dave each then own another property they don't get a second threshold the way it works is it uses complicated mechanisms to avoid uh, multiple thresholds and greater details can be found um, on the Office of State Revenue website in terms of how that operates or you might look up property chat there's some great threads on land tax so getting your thresholds right is really important because land tax for example in New South Wales once you exceed your threshold it's then a 1.6 percent tax on the value beyond that so and then it can even rise if it's premium property once you exceed a certain value it steps up even higher so land tax can be a very expensive tax and failure to register does not mean the tax goes away because when you sell property there's a requirement to obtain a land tax clearance certificate a land tax clearance certificate is intended to detect non-compliance with tax law and you can imagine they don't let you get away with it either they reassess you for many years of unpaid land tax and here's the tax problem that creates. Land tax is deductible on an income producing property in the year when it's paid. And land tax never applies to your own principal place of residence. Okay, So generally speaking, only investment or vacant land or holiday homes, etc., second properties will be subject to land tax. So it might be need you might need to do calculations to work out the extent that's dedu deductible in a year. But let's assume that you own a simple scenario where your own home is exempt and your investment property is taxable for some reason. Then you can claim a deduction for that land tax when it's paid. It's fairly straightforward. Um, if you fail. To register for land tax land tax arrears can only be claimed in the year in which it was incurred and if you weren't registered you might get an assessment notice three years after the relevant year 
which means you can't go back and amend after two years. So really important that you don't develop an arrears of land tax because I have seen it and many other tax advisors will have seen the same thing where somebody might be hit with five years of unpaid land tax, receive a very significant um, tax bill and they're incapable of claiming many of those years of deductions. The, there is a CGT um, rule which will allow the amount that you could not claim a tax deduction for to add into the cost base so that's some consolation but it's not the same as a tax deduction so watch for that um, other key issues with land tax now concern land tax surcharges which are now occurring in several states and these are additional um, amounts of land tax on top of the general um, land tax that apply if you don't satisfy the citizen or residency requirements for the relevant state, generally citizenship based, uh, but sometimes it does relate to a permanent resident as well. Um, so if you're a permanent resident, uh, you may find that the surcharge applies. And here's, here's one of the catches. You can be under the threshold for the standard land tax, but if you are subject to the surcharge, it still applies, so it's important to be correctly registered for land tax so these things don't happen. So my tip is this, whenever you buy a property, register for land tax in the relevant state. You'll never forget, you'll never miss out, you'll never accidentally miss the deadlines, and they won't issue an assessment notice if nothing's due. You won't hear anything for many, many years, and that's probably how 90% of clients are with their property holdings. Another tip I'll give you in terms of land tax is the strategy to avoid paying land tax. And this, this is not tax avoidance as such, this is just real good practical common sense. Many investors use a strategy of diversification. So they diversify either the property owner name, for example, Mrs. Smith might own two properties in Queensland and Mr. Smith owns two properties in Queensland rather than Mr. and Mrs. Smith owning four properties in Queensland, for example. Um, that's one way. The other way is by diversifying your holdings across different states. So Mr. and Mrs. Smith might own, uh, Mrs. Smith might own one property in Queensland and one in New South Wales, and Mr. Smith owns one in Queensland and one in New South Wales. Again, diversifying so you've got plenty of scope to use your thresholds and pay land tax of zero. Perfect, that's what we probably want to aim for because it's such a costly tax. It can really uh, affect your yields, it can really affect your returns, and it can be a massive outlay in some situations. I have seen some people who are very um, astute, self-funded retirees who have mistakenly uh, invested substantially into very cash flow positive properties um, and find that they then incur land tax bills in the tens of thousands of dollars a year, which can eliminate substantially uh, a lot of their rent uh, that they relied upon to uh, sustain their retirement. So watch those sorts of issues. And like I always say, have a look at our structuring video earlier in this playlist relating to uh, choosing the right structure before you buy, because this is no better example of uh, that planning coming into play. So you check your land tax position before you buy, not after, okay? Um, so hope that helps. Um, and if you need to, um, special rule you need to be aware of, if you live in a property and you're planning to move out, consider getting legal advice about whether you can change the ownership without paying stamp duty before you move out. Now, there are some tax concessions in New South Wales, Queensland, etc., where you can do these things. They do come with a lot of conditions, one of which is do it before you move out. But it might be complex, it might require some complex legal advice and, re and refinance, but it can be really worth it. For example, if um, Mr. Jones owns the home that is uh, the residence at the present time, Mr. and Mrs. Jones are moving out and plan to rent that property out, it might be that Mr. Jones could sell it to Mrs. Jones, but more likely Mr. And Mrs. Jones could split the title so it's in two names and can be refinanced to enliven some extra deductions and do some other things without paying stamp duty. So 
that'll take a bit of legal advice but it's a fairly straightforward process if you need any further guidance um, more than happy to drop into property chat um, and make some inquiries about that um, if you're a client we welcome your call subscribe check out our other videos in the playlist and we'll see you next time cheers